Well, the food industry in this country has very strict rules and regulations as to what is in products and what isn't. So if it's a product, a ready meal bought from a supermarket, it is labelled with all of those ingredients. And so when somebody buys a product, there'll be certain date codes on that product which can be traced back to the original sources. Now, a composite product like a, a lasagna or a shepherd's pie is made up of many different ingredients from many different food manufacturers and potentially many different countries as well if you trace back to the original raw materials. So, um, a date code or a batch code on a product should tell the food manufacturer exactly what ingredients, what batch codes of ingredients have been used in which batch of product. Um, now, food manufacturers have to label their products with the ingredients so that people can look at those ingredients and decide whether or not they want to buy it. Some people avoid certain products because of allergies, so they might be lactose intolerant or have an allergy to, to gluten. So they can look on the label and avoid certain ingredients and certain products. So it's very important that food manufacturers get those labels right. The, the problem here is some contamination happened at some, at some point. Um, now with the, the low levels of um, pork DNA that were found in, in the beef burgers, that was likely uh, um, an accidental contamination. So pork products were probably processed in the same meat processors as the beef. Um, clean down wasn't quite as effective as it should have been, so a little bit of cross-contamination happened, therefore small amounts of the pork DNA um, were found. When you're talking about larger percentages of the wrong meat in a product, so 29% of horse in a beef burger and in a, in a lasagna you're finding up to 60% of, of horse meat, that shows some, something has gone seriously wrong. So it's either deliberate um, one would hope it's not, or it's gross uh, negligence. You know, somebody just hasn't done the right sort of checks and that's ended, in, it ended up in, in the product um, at some point. In terms of the uh, checking of the, the DNA in certain products to make sure that you've got the right meat in, in the right products and so they're labelled correctly, uh, there will be routine checks. Um, there'll be some sort of... Um, uh, standardised procedure or some formula of checking um, and the overall responsibility of that lies with the Food Standards Agency. So it'll, yeah, there'll be r random um, checks um, that are taken place for, from time to time. Um, but the Food Industry uh, or the Food Standards Agency has now built in um, uh, um, more checks, so additional checks on top of that to now check, I think it's 224 different products they're going to check um, in the next little while to, to test for, for, for the right meat in, in the right product. So they've stepped up that checking considerably, I think. If you gave me a sample and you asked me to, um, to find out what species it was, what I would do, I'd carry out a test that would um, identify and quantify something called mitochondrial DNA. This is a form of DNA that's present in all species, but it is slightly different. And so what we do, we exploit the differences um, between species. So for example, mitochondrial DNA from humans will be different from mitochondrial DNA in, in um, horse and in cow. And so we would just look for the section of the mitochondrial DNA that's specific to Equus cabalus, which is um, the horse. Then what we do, we um, make a character test, we target that area, and then we carry out a technique called quantitative PTR, or real-time PTR. And what this does, is um, basically grows and amplifies this section of the DNA. And what we do, we add a flush into it. So as it, as it grows and amplifies, the flush increases, and so we use this instrument. Um, and what this tells us is basically, is this particular part of the DNA present, and if it is present, how much of it is there. Now this technique that we use is very, very sensitive. So for example, with the um, current situation where we've got um, lasagna with alleged horse meat in it, these microwave meals have already been through the cooking process. And so the chance of getting mitochondrial DNA in these samples would actually be quite low. And so we need to have a very, very sensitive technique. And this is real-time PCR, it's very, very sensitive. So we can detect their DNA down to billions of a gram.
and begin to get very, very low level at one point five. In terms of any health risks associated with um, horse meat, if the horse meat is intended for um, human consumption, then no, because the meat will have been treated hygienically, or hopefully it should have undergone the proper procedures um, in order for that to be um, edible. So in terms of um, a, a health risk, um, no, the, the horse meat should be absolutely fine, but of course people, um, if they're buying beef burgers, they want beef burgers and, and not horse. Um, so it's more of a, a consumer um, uh, preference thing rather than a, a safety thing. But if the horse isn't intended for um, consumption, there's a potential it may contain certain drugs, which of course then can be dangerous to, to human health. Um, in horses, phenylbutazone is what we'd call a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So it's used for, particularly in racing horses, um, for injuries. Um, as they get older they might develop um, osteoarthritis. So for the pain and, and fever um, and injuries that are associated with racing in particular. Um, we don't give phenylbutazone to horses that are, are intended for human consumption because um, phenylbutazone is actually a banned drug. It was withdrawn from use in humans because of the possible adverse effects that can take place in humans. So what usually happens um, if, if a horse has been given phenylbutazone for veterinary purposes because it's had an injury, um, it has to go in its records and horses come with a passport. So if there's evidence of um, phenylbutazone administration on the horse's passport then it's not cleared for human consumption. Um, and in fact when um, Horses are eaten in certain European countries quite, quite a lot. Um, for example, in France and in, in Belgium, um, there is quite stringent regulations associated with the presentation of, of passports and the full medication history of a horse um, that comes for slaughter to make sure that phenylbutazone doesn't get into the food chain. Some of the side effects that it can lead to that can be quite dangerous are liver and renal failure and if it's taken over a prolonged um, length of time then it can lead to a condition that we call aplastic anemia which means that um, people can lose their and weaken their immune system. I don't think there's any cause for concern at the moment. This is the sort of thing that um, you would risk if um, either somebody could be extremely unlucky and have a totally unpredictable reaction which would land them in hospital and it could be potentially life-threatening which would be very, very rare and very, very unpredictable. Um, or we're talking about exposure over the long term. So somebody would have to eat low levels of phenylbutazone for a very long time um, for, to increase their risk of getting any of these effects. So I don't think that people should be unduly worried about this at all. Um, what I would advise is if somebody believes that they've been eating these contaminated burgers um, or meals for a long time, um, and they get any suspect bruising, um, if they find that they're picking up illnesses more often than they would, then they would be advised to go to the doctor anyway and have a blood test and make sure that their immunity, that their blood is, is functioning correctly. Um, but I would tell people with those symptoms to go to the doctor anyway, whether or not they, they think they've eaten horse meat. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.